Good evening, I am Mr. Ish. Let's shift gears a bit and come back to a volume derivation video. We're looking here at a triangular pyramid and looking at the formula for such a pyramid, a three-dimensional solid. It could be a tricky volume derivation, especially when you compare it to a square pyramid. I've presented a volume derivation for a square pyramid in a previous video where I was talking about prism volumes, rectangular prism volumes and cubes. I'll post a little bit of a link to that video in the information for this video, so keep an eye out for that. It would be good to watch that before you watch this because that square pyramid volume derivation gives you the foundational knowledge you need to handle something like this. When you're looking at this solid over here, it's a cross section that develops in this manner over here and that cross section is always a triangle. If you pluck out this triangle, it looks something like this and you can call it having sides of S's. We can call this a regular triangular pyramid, regular meaning that all these three faces, here's one face, the triangular faces, they're all symmetrical to a certain degree. So we can call it a regular triangular pyramid. Each of these sides here has a side value of S. How can we go about determining what this S is? You have to think back to the properties of similar triangles. Take one of these triangular faces and just pluck it out and look at it dead on. When you're looking at it, you can generate a line which mimics that line you have over there, the slice, the cross-sectional slice line. We can give this a side dimension of an S. From an apex of this down to this, we can look at a certain height and we'll call that X. From the same apex to the base of this pyramid, we can call that an overall height, which corresponds to an overall base. If you do a ratio over here, it generates everything you need in terms of this side determination. X over S, the height over its corresponding base is equal to the height of the overall triangle over its base. And you can solve for S over here. BX is equal to SH and S is equal to BX over H. And why are we going through the trouble of calculating what this S is? For the very reason of this. If you were to determine the area of X of this shape over here, whatever it might be, you would integrate that specific area, this cross-sectional slice from the bottom all the way up to the top, from the base of this pyramid all the way up to the height of this pyramid. We can call this zero and we can call this h from zero to height, the top apex of this pyramid. And we were to integrate this area of determination, we would get the volume, the summation of all of these cross-sectional triangular slices from the base to the apex. And you know, this formula over here very well accounts for the convergence of this shape as you go upwards. The cross-sectional slices at the base are large. As you go up towards the apex, these cross-sectional slices become small because the shape becomes narrow or it converges towards that apex. This formula accounts for that change in the cross-sectional slice dimension from the base to that apex. Anyhow, we've determined the side is equal to bx over h. If you look at again at this triangle, we're looking here at a cross-sectional slice. I'm just looking at it now dead on or flat. And this S over here is equal to BX over H. And this represents the base of this triangular slice. Let's bring that base right down here. We know that the base of the triangular slice is equal to BX over H. But we need to determine the area right here. The area for triangular slice is always equal to half base height. I have the base, I need to determine the height of that cross-sectional slice. And that right there is a slightly tricky part. I'm looking at the slice and I have to determine this height of the slice. We have a right triangle. How can we go about doing that? Well, we can use a little bit of a geometry over there. If all of this is equal to S, and when I've bisected this into two triangles, this is equal to S over two, and I know all around I had S's. See, S's all around. And then let's transpose these measurements onto this using what we know. If this is equal to bx over h, which is s, then s over 2 is bx over 2h. I'm doing half of this right here. And this right here must be bx over h. And this right here, the height, I'm going to call that y. I'm solving for that y using the Pythagorean theorem. a square plus b square is equal to c square. y square plus this square, which is b square x square over 4h square is equal to c square, which is b square x square over h square. I have to solve for y. All of this I'm doing to determine the height, the height component of this cross-sectional triangular slice, which we're looking at right over here, this slice. 
this is what we're looking at anyhow let's solve for y y will equal to you'll take everything on the other side with the common denominator of 4 8 square you'll get 3 b square x square over h square and root you can do this algebra on the side and confirm it you can do the square root of the perfect squares over here b x h will come out we have a 4 down here let's not forget that 4 in the common denominator we have the square root of this and it's going to come out as this bx over 2h root 3. This right here is equal to y which is equal to your height. So the height dimension has been determined bx over 2h root 3. All of this work has given me everything I need for my area determination. This triangular slice has an area half base height which is equal to 1 over 2 times base bx over h times height bx root 3 over 2h compute the product of all of this you'll get b square x square root 3 over 4h square and this is equal to area of x this value right over here which will feed into this volume determination from a lower limit of 0 up to a higher limit of h you could have even rotated this sideways so you're looking along the x-axis which is what i'll do so let's do the volume determination. We're looking from 0 to h. Here's my formula for the area of the cross-sectional triangular slice which will feed through. We have b square x square root 3 over 4 h square dx. We have a bunch of coefficients which can come out. Everything is here with regards to this x component. We can bring out b square root 3 over 4 h square from 0 h up to x square dx. Right? This is what's going to integrate. So we have a lot of things which came out. You know the integration of this is easy. It's x cubed over 3. We have b square root 3 over 4h square times x cubed over 3 from an upper limit h to a 0. You know when you compute this in terms of the definite integral, you'll basically get an h cube over here because 0 is meaningless. I'm getting an h cube. This h square cancels out with that h cube, so you only have an h left here in the numerator. This root 3 cancels out with this denominator 3 and it brings a root over here and you can erase this. So what do we end up really getting as our volume? The volume of this triangular pyramid would therefore be this value right over here. You can write it in this good way. You can do 1 over 4 root 3 b square h or you can say it's going to be 1 over root 3 b square h over 4. All of these ways of writing it are fine and they're right. And this right here is my volume of this triangular pyramid. The volume formula has been determined. Generally, if you open up textbooks and you look at triangular pyramid volume formula, the formula will be given to you as 1 or 3, the area of the base, area of the base times the height component. If you look at this formula and you compare it to this formula, it looks different. But this right here is looking at the area of the base, which is factored in here, and you have a height. There is a reconciliation you can do between the two, and you can show that these two are equal. I won't do it, but they're equal. Based on this formula, what you're doing is calculating the area of this entire base right over here, the base of this pyramid, and then you're multiplying by the height. But to calculate the area of the base of this in terms of dimensions, you would still go through this determination procedure which involved the properties of similar triangles and you would have come up with these type of values which then you would multiply with height and you would still get a value which is equal to that in terms of the variables that are involved but the volume of this is right as I presented it you can always write it as 1 over 4 b square h over root 3 as being the volume of a triangular pyramid and it is a good volume determination and with that we end this video hopefully you found it beneficial you can look at it practice this technique and it is a good technique to know thank you for watching have a nice day